Number 25. A useful solvent that will dissolve salts as well as organic compounds is the compound acetonitrile, which is H3CCN. It is present in paint stripers. Cool. Letter A. Write the Lewis structure for acetonitrile and indicate the direction of the dipole moment in the molecule. Okay, so let's just do that first before we go on to B and C. We just got to write a Lewis structure. Now this will be kind of a, a review. We have a whole playlist just designated to drawing the Lewis structure step by step. So if you need just a little bit more guidance, you could always check out those videos in that playlist. So, so just go check the channel out. But here we're just going to kind of do a quick inversion. Now they're saying that acetonitrile is H3CCN. They're, they're listing it to us in a way that it's written. So it seems like I have my three hydrogens and that's going to be bound to a carbon. Keep in mind that the hydrogens are never going to be the central atom. So my carbon has three hydrogens around it. So H, H, and H. Now the next one seems like it's going to be bound to a carbon. So I'm just going to keep extending the chain. And then that carbon is going to be bound to the nitrogen. So I have this type of framework. Now we just have to put in the valence electrons. On the periodic table, right, hydrogen group one always has just one valence electron. So one dot for each hydrogen. Each carbon has four valence electrons. It's in group 4A or 14. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then the nitrogen has five valence electrons. It's in the group right next to carbon. So one, two, three, four, five. Single bond everything just to see who has the octet already. And then we will work on multiple bonds. So maybe I'll make the one bond in the middle here. Okay, so this carbon seems happy. It already has the octet, two, four, six, eight electrons. And remember, each hydrogen can only have one bond, and that's what it has here. But now the carbon and the nitrogen need a little help, right? This nitrogen has two, four, six electrons. So it needs one more bond, let's see. So dot to dot, I now have a double bond. But this nitrogen needs more, two, four, six, seven. And we will make the final bond. That's a triple bond. And this carbon is cool. It's got the octet. This nitrogen's cool. And we have officially drawn the Lewis structure. Now we just have to indicate the direction of the dipole moment. Just know that a dipole moment is always drawn in an angle, uh, not an angle, but a arrow formation. The general... Uh, the general, I guess, symbol for a dipole moment is this. This is your dipole moment. I always remember which end goes to which element because you see how this kind of makes like a little positive over here. And on this side, it's just like a negative. The arrow is always going to the more electronegative element. So more electronegative. And the positive that is made with that little plus sign, that's the, mo uh, that's the least electronegative. So we basically just have to find out where is the most electronegative element here. Well, if we just look on our electronegativity chart for periodic table, it's a beautiful chart that I drew here. Hydrogen's all the way over here. So nobody cares about that element, but carbon We'll just put carbon over here and nitrogen is right next door. Remember your electronegativity trend. As you go from left to right, you are increasing in electronegativity. So the nitrogen would be more electronegative than the carbon. And the arrow always goes toward the more electronegative element. And since in this case, I drew the nitrogen over here, the dipole moment, would be going in this direction. And that's all you have to basically say. Now, there's also a little bit more specific stuff for your dipole moment. If you want to include the signs, this little symbol is also representing dipole. So you would say this is the partial negative, and this side is the partial positive. 
So I could just say that as well. This is the partial negative, and this is the partial positive. Cool. Letter A done. Now we have to identify the hybrid orbitals used by the carbon atoms, okay, in, in the molecule to form the sigma bonds. So this little denotion right here, this always means a sigma bond. Okay, so we just have to know where our sigma bonds are located. Well, remember, a sigma bond is in every single type of bond. You gotta have at least one sigma bond in your bond. When you have double and triple bonds, you will still only have one sigma, but the rest are gonna be pi bonds. But let's just see what is the hybridization of the carbon. So it seems like I have two carbons here. I got one carbon and one carbon here. So I just have to do the hybridization for both of these. Okay. So now let's see what's going on. When we do hybridization, it just comes down to here, right? So the hybridization is including your sp's and sometime d's orbitals, d's orbitals. <laughs> Uh, okay, I was thinking of something else, but anyway, let's just keep going. So your hybrid orbitals is a combination of the sp's and d's, in which the the you know the orbitals are going to overlap to form a sp specific bond. Now the easiest way to form the hybridization or to know what the hybridization is is just coming from how many letters are in your hybridization. So for example, sp3, you have one s and three p's. That's a total of four letters. If I strip away one p and I have an sp2, I only have two p's, that's a total of three letters. And the number of letters always corresponds to the number of things that's going on around your element. So a thing is either one single bond one thing is one double bond. So even though you see two lines, it's still classified as one thing, one triple bond, or a lone pair. So let's do this carbon first. This carbon has one single bond. It's got another single bond, one more single bond, and one more single bond. That's four things. So four things, four letters, sp3. So this carbon right here is sp3 hybridized. And now I'm just going to get rid of the drawings here because I want to move on to this carbon. So now let's see how many things are around this carbon. Well, this carbon has a single bond and now it's got one whole double bond. Keep in mind that even though there's three lines, it's still classified as one thing. So you got one, two things. Two things, two letters, SP hybridized. Okay, now I'm just gonna strip away the colors because we're almost done. So now identify the hybrid orbitals used by the carbon atoms in the molecule to form the sigma bonds. All right, so now just know that whenever you're making a sigma bond, the sigma bonds are always going to be made from your hybridization. So basically this one was a tricky question. They stated it as identify the hybrid orbitals that are used to form the sigma bonds, but always the sigma bonds are always made by the specific hybridization. So the sigma bonds in this carbon are going to be made by sp3 orbitals. And the sigma bonds that are going to be formed from this carbon is from the sp um, hybridization orbitals. So you basically have two answers here. You have sp3 and sp. So that was, that was pretty, pretty tricky of them, but they just, that basically was just boiling down to what was the hybridization. So now we did letter B. Now for C, it says, describe the atomic orbitals that form the pi bonds in the molecule. 
Note that it is not necessary to hybridize the nitrogen atom. So we don't really care about this nitrogen because we're going to just be focusing on the carbon for this triple bond. Now, we just need to know where those pi bonds are. Remember that for every single bond, there's just a sigma bond. The pi bonds only come in when you have a double or a triple bond. And just know that when you have a triple bond, it always consists of one sigma and two pi bonds. So for one of these bonds, one of them is the sigma bond, and that was taken care of with your hybridized orbital, the sp. The other two bonds are coming from your reserves, the 2p. And just know that when you're talking about pi bonds, this always comes from your reserved p orbitals. So it will not be your specific sp3, sp2, sp, sp3d orbitals. It's coming from just the pi orbitals. And this has to come from the electron configuration of carbon. So if I just write out what carbon's electron configuration is, 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. This kind of is also a little bit of a review. We have also a, another playlist that just goes directly into electron configuration, if you need a little bit more in-depth explanation there, so just go check the channel out. But as we can see here, the p orbitals, the reserve, is coming from the valence, and the valence for carbon is the 2p orbitals. So describe the atomic orbital. That's coming from the p orbitals, because the p orbitals always make the pi bonds. The hybridization orbitals always makes the sigma bonds. So specifically, we just have to say, well, what valence p orbital? It's the 2p. So it's the 2p atomic orbitals that uh, form the pi bonds. So I have a 2p for this one and a 2p down here. And that's basically the end of the question. And now we just did letter three and we are done. Letter three? Number three? Wait. Letter three. Yep. I still don't know those either, right? I'll say like number A, but it's really like letter A. That and left from my right. A grown adult still don't know it. But anyway, <laughs> this is the final answer. I hope this helped you out. Let me know in the comments. A lot of things to unpack here, but basically it just boils down to your sigma bonds always comes from your hybridization. And maybe if I could just expand this a little bit and I just maybe get rid of this, the hybridization is another way of saying that is your hybrid orbitals. And then the other ones, your pi bonds, are coming from your p orbitals. Those are your atomic orbitals, so not hybridized. That's the over, you know, the overlying information that we need to know here. And I hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel, and I hope you're having a great day. Um, tell your friends, tell your classmates about this cool channel. Thank you so much for that. Just gets the word out there that this channel exists. And hope you're having a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.